Let's pray. Father and eternal God, we thank you once again for allowing us to yes. be into your house one more time. Jesus. We thank you for our life, health, and strength, Father. Yes. We thank you for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. Yes. And Lord, we ask that you forgive us for any sins that we committed. Yes. Lord, we ask that you would decrease us and increase you so that we may live better, walk better, talk better, and serve better than we ever have before. Bless those who are here, those that desire to be here and couldn't, yes. those who may be on the way, and those who will be watching. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for all that you do and who you are. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right. So, lesson tonight is on spiritual burnout. It's not, this one's not in the book. It's out of one of the old. Um, oh, you got an older book? One of the older YPWW books. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, the last couple of lessons in that book are kind of repetitive from what we were doing. Yeah, most, yeah. So, we switched up, just did something about going over. Okay, spiritual burnout. Lesson text is coming from Exodus chapter 18, verses 14 through 23, and Numbers chapter 20, verses 10 through 13. Teacher, before we leave tonight, you can give her, she can give you her phone number. Yes, she can. Okay, devotional readings from 1 Kings 19, verses 1 through 8. Jeremiah 20, verses 7 through 13. Central verse is coming from Matthew 11:28. 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the essential thought for this lesson will be, let us avoid spiritual burnout, casting <laughs> all cares on Jesus. Another name for burnout is exhaustion. Yep. It means a person is physically, emotionally, or spiritually tired. Mm -hmm. The burnt out person can lose interest or start to not care. They can go through the motions of serving God, but forget the true purpose of the walk in the ministry. But there's good news. Burnout can be prevented. Burnout can also be corrected if it occurs. Consider if you have a burnt out light bulb in your lamp. You will simply replace it. If a unit burns out on your kitchen stove or appliance, you will replace them. Moses, the spiritual and natural leader of the children of Israel, serves as a good example of someone in danger of spiritual burnout. He handled the, nat the natural complaints of the people, such as hunger, thirst, and domestic matters. He also handled spiritual situations such as spiritual wickedness in the high place, leadership rebellions, and idolatry practices in the ranks. Uh, so just like our intro was saying about burnouts, um, they happen more than people know. It's easy to get burned out serving the Lord um, just because everybody serves the Lord for different reasons. Mm -hmm. You know, some people serve for a position, some people serve because they love them. And the thing about when you find people that know how to serve, mm -hmm. we usually call them the faithful people, mm -hmm. is that faithful people get worked a lot more than everybody else does. Because they're dependable. They're people you can count on. So it's almost like you're burning the candle at both ends because every time you need something done or you have a program or something, you're always calling those people that you know who are faithful to come when we know that we have many other people who can step in and fill in too. And it's not that, you know, people who love the Lord don't mind working, but everybody needs rest. You know, it's just like on our jobs. We don't mind going to work, but it gets a point in time you've been working so much that, man, I need a vacation. I need to get my mind away from it. I need to get away from this place. <laughs> you know, and you know it's it's normal because you get like I said, you get burnt out. You get so you get tired of seeing the job. Get tired of seeing people, even though you love them. You just need to go back and recharge. You need something to kind of light that fire back once that fire starts to dim out. And so Moses was. Um, Facing this because since he was the leader, he was the leader of the people, 
he was handling all the complaints. But then in Exodus chapter 18, uh, when he comes back to his father-in-law, um, comes back and meets up with him, and he says, you know, when his father-in-law saw what he was doing, starting at verse 14, he said, what is the thing thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou self alone among the people and stand in front of them from morning to evening? And so Moses tells them because, you know, they come to inquire of God and when they, whatever matters they have that he makes judgments on. And in verse 17, his father-in-law tells them, say, what you're doing is not a good thing. And so he tells them, you're going to wear, you're going to wear yourself out by doing this. Because this is a burden that's too heavy. And one thing about this life that we live and we've been bringing up this point in previous lessons is that we are all in ministry. Ooh. You know, like I said, regardless of whether you got a, a title or wherever you are, if you, the Lord is your, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you are in ministry. Ooh. You know, whether big or small, whatever you're doing, the way you live and the way you talk, the way you, the way you carry yourself is all a ministry. And, you, and every day you're ministering to people whether you realize it or not. Whatever you do. And so, he looked at it and said, even though what we're doing is small, it's still heavy. Because who we represent. And going through this day by day, you get tired. You get comfortable. It's either to get stagnant into the same church routine to where you may start out on fire this year, but then next year you may, be, you may have died down because it gets repetitive. Especially what we talked about earlier, if you're someone who's getting called on a lot to do a lot and you don't have any relief or none to help or no one you can trust, you know, to get it, to help you out with it, then you're going to get burned out. Mm -hmm. And so Moses' father-in-law gives him some advice. And so in verse 19, he tells him uh, he's going to give him some counsel. So um, he told him to teach the people, starting at verse 20, about the ordinances and laws and show them the way they must walk and what they must do. And then in verse 21, he tells them, um, out of the people, pick out um, trustworthy men. Ooh. You know, those who, you know, who are integrity, you those who know, you, yes. can, you can delegate the responsibility yes. to, and let them be over, you know, some over 10, some over 50, some over 100. Mm -hmm. You know, that way you don't have to carry all of this by yourself. Right. Um, you know, like we talked about last week, you know, that's not how, you know, we have people who have talents in church, but they're not always given the opportunity to express those talents and help out. Because there are people who do get insecure. They don't want to give out that responsibility because they figure they're going to lose popularity or lose control. But understand that God sent those people to help. That's what he does. You know, like I said, we're supposed to be training people up. You know, if you want to, if you're really going to train people, give them responsibility. Let them teach them what they're supposed to do, then give them the opportunity to do it. Right. To where everybody's not knocking on your door all the time or calling you late at night every time they got a problem, they got other people they can go to. But you have to give these people the opportunity not only to show themselves trustworthy, but show themselves that they are people of integrity, yes. that they do know the word, that they do know what they're talking about, and they have the people's best interest. And so this is what um, his father-in-law is trying to tell them. So he said, you keep doing this day after day, Seeing all these people, and this isn't like you're seeing, you know, 20, 30 people. This is a large nation. Ooh. You can't handle all of their problems by yourself because you're going to get tired of this. Ooh. And so you got the people to help you, so train them what we should be doing first anyway. Come to, when you got people, train them what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to act, how they're supposed to carry themselves. Then get them, place them over, you know, place them over people. Now, after you train all the people, you know which ones you can pick who, you know, the people with integrity, the people, you know, who actually love and care about the people, who love the Lord. Pick those people, pray, you know, and, you know, place them over. But then he also tells them, say, take it to the Lord and see if the Lord is okay with it. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm mentioning this to you, take it to the Lord. If he doesn't have a problem with it, then you can implement it. And so he goes, he, he takes it to the Lord, he, he's fine with it. And so he places, you know, he has people out to help him in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're supposed to be trained up to do anyway. That's why the Bible tells us that, you know, he gave some apostles, some 
some pack, some prophets, some teachers, you know, that fivefold ministry that we're here to help the church. You know, you're not here to do everything by yourself when you don't have to. You know, you can if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. And so, <clears throat> and that's one of the fastest ways where people get burned out because you're taking so much on to yourself that it affects your health, it affects your relationships with people. It, affect, it can affect your relationship with God, too. You know, you get to a point where you just say, like, Lord, I just need a break from this. I step down from step down from the church, just get away from people because you've been working so long. And let's be honest, people don't help matters anyway. Especially when you're trying to mentor people, you're trying to pastor and minister to people who keep making the same mistakes over and over again. You're trying to tell them the right thing and they keep, do, they keep doing the wrong thing. You know, every time they get in trouble, they call you, you give them counsel to God. It goes in one ear and out the other. And so, they, you know, you constantly get that, it'll burn you out if you don't keep in mind why you're doing it. If you don't keep yourself refreshed. Um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with stepping away. There's nothing wrong with taking time to rest and clear your mind. Is that yeah. Okay, you said that about too. After he didn't fed the multitude, he went to go rest. Yes, he has to get some rest. Multitude came right with him. <laughs> so they weren't going to let him rest either for long. But it's so important that we just get that um, that rest and know that the Lord is with us. Yes, yes. And allow him to work through us instead of us trying to do it ourselves. Yes, yes. Because he, if we're doing it through his power, we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to do everything on your own, you're going to burn yourself out even faster. That's right. You know, don't try to make moves that the Lord didn't ordain. You're trying to knock down barriers he didn't tell you to go do. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to go start churches he didn't tell you to start. Mm -hmm. You got to, like, realize all this stuff is affecting people's souls. Right. And you don't want to burn, not only burn yourself out, you're going to burn the people out around you, too. Because mm -hmm. everybody doesn't handle things well when they get tired, they get irritable, they they start saying things to people that make them feel some kind of way, right. now they don't want to be around you. Right. And so you don't want to ruin your witness. You don't, You definitely don't want to mess up your impact and your influence on people, either. Because, say, like this, how can you tell me, how can you tell me that I should listen to the Lord and be this way when I just saw you acting a different way too? Ooh. You know, when I'm tired and frustrated, you can't you, you can't say I need to put my mind on the Lord and calm you, to calm me down when I just saw you in the same way and you weren't trying to hear. So you know, it's deeper than than a lot of people see. But you know, we're willing to work. We're willing to do what needs to be done. And when the Lord has you do things, even though it doesn't seem like you're going to get tired, I mean, just a little bit of things that make you physically exhausted. Hey, I mean, you know that from preaching. Ooh. And then you preaching, you don't think you're doing much. You think you're just talking. But then when you're finished, you're like, man, why am I so exhausted? It was just a little bit, but it takes a lot out of it. But that's the thing about whenever you're not even doing that. Even if you're just working around the house, you're working in the yard or something, if you've got a lot to do and you start doing it, and then in the middle of it, you might get tired. But you, especially if you see you're working and you don't see any progress being made. And that's what gets a lot of people frustrated too because I've been serving the Lord all this time and maybe that thing you've been waiting on hasn't come yet. Mm -hmm. Or why everybody else, I'm watching everybody else getting blessed but me. And, yep, and you easily fall, and it's easy for you to get frustrated and say, well, this ain't working. No, it's working. But like we said, there's a time and a place for everything. You know, it's said uh, for such a time as this. Ooh. So for every blessing, there's a time. And, and just remember that when the blessing comes, it's not just for you, it's for other people also. Yes. But like I say, but the Lord has to move and shift things into place. Because yeah. everybody that's needed in order to carry out this blessing, they're not always doing what they're supposed to do either. And some of it is we're not where we're supposed to be yet either. So once we get there, then everybody else gets and they fall in the line, then the Lord can bless. And then you'll see why it took so long and see that what the Lord wanted to do with what he gave you. So, um, so really, we just have to stay encouraged, stay yes, yes. in the word daily. I know we can tell people that, but you have to actually get in and read 
and if you don't know things, ask questions about it. This is how you get fed and get understanding. Because it's more, it's one thing just to say, well, you need to trust God and get in your word. But if you don't know what you're reading, how can you trust it? If you don't know who you're reading about, how can you trust it? Mm -hmm. So those are things where we have to do a better job in teaching, especially kids. Because we can tell kids to go and do these things, but they're probably not going to do them. Or if we want them to remember scripture, don't find scripture for them. Let them find it themselves. It's going to mean, it's going to mean even more. You know, we're in a day where we got all this technology. We got Google. Google will find anything you want to find. That's it. If you don't know where it is, all you got to do is put it in Google. Google. Google will give you every every everything, every, everything will pop up on it. And you can find it and yes, read it, uh, and it'll stick out to you more. Mm -hmm. And then when you have questions about it, then you can ask questions after you've read about it. So you're not completely yes. lost when I, when someone gives you the answer to it. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that's one thing we need to do, especially with kids, is we need to put more on them than, than we normally do. Because mm -hmm. I mean, they're kids, but kids can find anything they want to. They can find anything bad they want to, then you can use the same technology to find some good things out too. That's true. So that's true. And if we're able to teach our kids about what to do during those times we're frustrated, those times we're tired, how to, you know, talk to the Lord and just cast your cares upon them, which means let the Lord know what's going on, leave it in his hands and stop worrying about it. Let the Lord work it out. Only thing you do, you just need to do what you're doing. Then they become adults. They know how to go to the Lord in prayer mm -hmm. and leave it there and do what they're supposed to do and they continue to teach their kids also. Because the last thing we want to do is become like that generation that was in um, Joshua that didn't know the Lord because the, the adults were not teaching them about the Lord. And so when the Bible says they did evil in the sight of the Lord, they got caught, carried off into captivity until the Lord had to bring them out and he had to place judges in front of them, over them, to make sure, you know, they did what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But we should have to take all that because it's our responsibility to train the child, train the children up. You know, they said train the child the other way they should go and they'll never depart. You know, it's, our, it's up to us to teach our kids the word of God, to teach them how to have a relationship with God other than just talking about it. And like we said, you know, you can't expect your kids to do something they don't see you doing. You know, you want your kids to pray to the Lord, they should see you praying. You want to see, you want your kids to talk to the Lord when they get in um, trouble with situations? They should see you talking to the that's Lord. That's right. I can put your feet. Yeah. So that's what we do. We can't put all this responsibility on kids. You should be this and you should be that. If they're looking at, if the examples that they have don't do the same thing. You know, don't expect your kids to be soldiers for the Lord in a battle you don't think we're fighting with them. So. We don't have much for that. That's pretty much the lesson. Mm -hmm. um, what was the subject you said? Uh, spiritual burnout. Spiritual burnout. Amen. Yeah, truly, we thank God for being here tonight. We thank God for Elder and his uh, uh, companion here. Thank God for uh, Deacon Quentin. It's a very beautiful lesson. And as saints, church folks, leaders, we'll find out that. Being burnt out, though it happens many times in churches. A lot of times we have to understand that being leaders, the Lord don't appoint us as leaders to do all the work. That's why he, when he put the church together, he gave talents like preaching, teaching, missionary, different type of jobs because they all work together, but not just one person doing it. If God would have intended for that to happen, he didn't need nobody else in the church that one person to do the whole thing. But I believe it's very important that when we become leaders, especially in the church, are appointed to anything as leaders, I believe we need to be led by the Spirit of God. Let God lead us. Because even the word told us, He'll never put too much on you that you can bear. See? But I've been, as long as I've been in the church, I've been in churches around different leaders, and pastors, elders, that wants to do everything in the church. They want to do all the preaching. They want to do all the teaching. They want to do all, they want to do everything in the church. 
I want the people to listen to what they're saying. And whatever's the job, they, they do it. That ain't what God intended to happen when we're in the church. We got to learn how to delegate. See, when I was working before I retired, I had 15 paint and body men working under me uh, as the supervisor. But each one of those was what we call um, their body paint and mechanics. But they're certified in all areas. But all of them can do certain things. See what I'm saying? They was able to do certain jobs. So what we have to do, even in the church, we got to learn how to delegate to different people. But you got to watch doing that too. Because there's some jobs in the church you can't give to certain people. You got to know who you're giving it to. Because although you're trying to delegate something to someone else, you might put the wrong person in that position that do more harm than good. So if you're led by the Spirit of God, he'll show you and tell you who to put in certain positions in the church to help free up the leaders. And if everybody does their part, it's just like the word team, T-E-A-M, together everyone achieves much, but they got to work together. See what I'm saying? And you find any place where one person trying to do everything themselves, they going to mess up something. It may go good for a little while, <laughs> but after a while, the bottom will fall out of it. So it ain't for us to try to do everything. Delegate things. Let people, you got people that can teach, let them teach. You got people that can teach Sunday school, or, and if you'd like to do it, let them do it. You got deacons that know how to preach, let them preach sometimes. You know, I mean, I know I'm the pastor of the church. I can preach every Sunday, but I ain't going to do it. That ain't going to kill me. I preach when I feel like preaching, you know, but they get the word because I've got other ministers. I even got deacons. I got missionaries can bring the word. See what I'm saying? So we have to learn how to delegate. And when we do that, God will bless us to, to not to be burned out. Jesus, after Jesus was praying, Jesus did what he had to do. He had rest. You know, so you can't you can't do it all. Do you will burn out? Like Dickens was saying, but sometimes you get so burned out. When you get so burned out that you can't do anything, what good is you? You can't do God, the church ministry any good when you all told, all burned out. That's one of the main thing they tell us when we go to uh, pastor and elders class at school. The pastors have to take vacations every now and then. Leave somebody. You gotta have somebody can be in charge. You shouldn't be running the church. You ain't got nobody running but you. That's right. You need somebody you can depend on, whether it's a deacon, whether it's another assistant. Because you need a vacation. You got to get away from folks, especially black folks. Or they'll run you crazy. Yes, they will. They'll have you drinking liquor yeah. if you ain't mighty careful. <laughs> trying to deal with them. I'm trying to tell you what I know. You trying to deal with this, you trying to deal with that. You trying to deal with that. You got to get with Lord, help me, Lord. <laughs> right. Get away for a while. Get, get, get things together, you know. And then the Lord will bless you, then you come back and then continue what you're doing. But always have the ministry, the Lord's ministry, continue to work on, and you can do that. I never want to get to the point where I think that I need to do everything as the best. But when you, when you ever do that, you, you, you have a, a, a big problem, and it's a big mistake. You see what I'm saying? God will send you places. And God will send people to put people in your paths to help your job be a little bit easier. But you just preach the word. Teach the word. Whoever it might be. Now, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, a little bit different than a lot of, a lot of people's, you know, when it comes down to, to uh, just anybody coming and preaching in the church, in my, in the church, because you got to be careful bro, who you let come in the church. You got to be careful who you let come in your pulpit, because they attack people to say things to people that take up the church. I've seen it happen, not in here, 
But I've seen it happen. So you got to watch as well as pray. But we all got to work together. Because we're in this thing together, bro. It ain't just all holiness. It ain't just the Baptists. It ain't just the Methodists. See? It ain't just the Catholics, but we're all in this thing together. And what we should do, we should be working together. And if everybody do their part, it make it easy for everybody else. But that's why I tell the people here at OK, I'm saying this, I'm done. See? Anything we do, let the Lord lead us, lead you. Because only what you do for Christ is going to last. So everything you're doing, if it ain't for Christ, it ain't going to last. I told Oak Hill, and, and people love people to death. You got to love them when you're in the church. You got to love them. But you got to ask God to help you to overcome people. Especially when you're in the ministry. Because people will tear you down. People will mislead you. But once God helps you to overcome people, I'm not saying hate people because you do, you go to hell. I say overcome people. So they won't come in your life or cause you to whatever. And once you overcome people, people can say what they want, they can do what they want to you, they can, they, can, they can do anything they want, but they won't hurt you. They won't interfere with your ministry. See? So, but that's my little two cents. I'm done. I'm going to be quiet. Someone else. So, I'm just going on what you're saying. And Exodus 17 reminds me of when the Israelites were going against the Amalekites. Moses was holding. I think off you, brother. Moses was holding. I think off you. Moses was holding up the um, staff of God, and as long as Moses was holding up the staff, the Israelites were winning. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he started coming down, mm -hmm. they were losing. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I said was it Joshua and Hur had came to the side of them and helped them hold it up. Mm -hmm. And so until sunset, until they were able to defeat. Them. Mm -hmm. So that reminds of what you were saying about, um, you know, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the person that's leading, but if they need help, and you see they need help, I'll come offer the help. That's right. But you got to have people who are willing to help. Willing to. That's right. And also willing to be in the positions that they are. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it's always good. It's good to desire to do more, mm -hmm. but let the Lord place you there. Don't mm -hmm. try to place yourself there. That's right. That's true. You don't have to. Trust me, if, if, it, if the Lord wants you there, you ain't got to hurt nobody. You ain't got to scheme or connive or do anything else. The Lord will place you there. Yes, he will. And during that time he while you're in that position, to to use it, it's training time. Mm -hmm. Learn as much as you can. Get as close to the Lord as you can. So that way, when it's time for you to step into that position, mm -hmm. or step into that next opening or wherever you're going, mm -hmm. you're more prepared than you would be. Right. Before. And so, you know, it's just like, you know, people have been waiting for time and waiting for things to happen and stuff that like, you know, mm -hmm. we talked about that last week. Say it's just it's just training time. Yes. It's just, all this is is, you know, if you're waiting on organization and we're waiting on men to do things, men gonna choose whoever they want to choose. Mm -hmm. But when the time for the Lord to bring you out, mm -hmm. he gonna bring you out. Mm -hmm. And it ain't gonna be just somewhere you wanna be, it's gonna be where you need it. Mm -hmm. Where you're gonna be the most effective. Mm -hmm. so you can get to a point where you can be around people so much, they hear you, they can hear you teach and preach and it it doesn't do anything to them because they're so used to you. But then when you get around a whole new group of people who haven't heard you, and it's like fresh, it's a fresh word, it's fresh, and it's, we haven't heard it like this before, you can find out it, it does a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, that's why it's different for, it's good to have different people come and speak every now and then because, mm -hmm. you know, it gives you a different perspective. That's it, that's it. You know, yes. Like I said, we try to, you don't want to hear the same people all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's something people do, but if you can have somebody different do it, why not? Mm -hmm. And don't be threatened by them doing it because if they something by each one up the country. If they can do something with you, I can. <laughs> they help me, help me. Exactly. I don't care like that. You don't care who you get it from as long as you get it. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't care who I don't care who leads you to the Lord as long as you dare. That's right. As long as when, when the time comes and everybody getting lifted up into the clouds or whatever, you right there along with side everybody else. That's, That's all we care about.
But that's what the Lord's going to do. The Lord's going to say, you don't know what the Lord has in store. And you don't know who he's going to use you to, re to revive somebody else, too. You know, um, you know the fire's out somewhere. You might see somewhere to, re to relit that fire. You know, start a fire or relit it. If there wasn't a fire, there's start one. You know, that's what a revival is. When you want to revive people, you know, go revive them. You know, I thought the revival was for really what? for the saints. Because sometimes, you know, the saints kind of burn down, mm -hmm. ain't got that fire no more, ain't mm -hmm. telling the testimony no more. Mm -hmm. and you bring a, a fire and like evangelist in, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To put the saints back on fire. Mm -hmm. so that's why we used to think when I was growing up with what revival was for. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Well, that's that, you know what? In a way, in a way, it's true because I mean the saints got to be on fire before the angels. See what I'm saying? And sometimes we get to the point where we get so down and weak that the Lord has to send yeah, a revival. A revival. A revival, revival means to bring back, bring you back to original. Now we, it's not we. I wouldn't say it's just for the saints because even for the the sinner too. But it will it does benefit the saints a lot. Because we do need it every night. Believe it or not. We we haven't got to heaven yet. So every night, every now and then we need to be revived. Regardless of who we revived, but we need to be revived. You know. So and you and you're right, a lot of people used to, you know, you think about that's just for the for the saints. Well, yeah, it waits for it's for the saints too. And for the saints to be revived, but also for the, the ones that ain't. Yeah. So if you get the saints back on fire, they can bring in the ones, they family members that ain't saved. They know who's going to be saved. That's right. Well, but if they lose it, what we call dull. Mm -hmm. We get dull. They lose that sharpness. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they come in the house church. All church is church. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the people that ain't going to church say, sir, it's church is church. You ain't telling me nothing about God. I don't want to hear if you came here, you on fire. Mm -hmm. Oh, we did this, we had this, mm -hmm. this testimony. Well, you can make me on fire. That's right. I want to know about your God. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, that's when you was talking about burnout, that's what I was thinking too. I said, yeah, I, I've seen people burnt out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I get away from them, I slide over with them. Because I, got, I still got fire in me. Yes, sir. There's a lot of stuff I did. I got 15 years. I figured I said, I got 15 years. I got 15 strong years. Right? So I don't want to be burnt out. I don't want to be brought down. You know what I mean? You're right. You know, this is the time right now. Go yes. forward with it right here. That's true. Yeah. Right now, man. This is it. That's right. You, you're in your youth still. When I get old, you know, I'll sit down on the bench. See if I see. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> you got to keep that fire burning. That's right. You know, you know, a lot of time, a lot of churches that fire, you know, ain't like it used to be a lot of, it's like, for whatever reason, you know, I guess the older we get, I guess a lot of fire kind of get a little bit cool, I guess, but we still got to keep that fire burning. Bro. That's right. You know, especially we trying to lead people to Christ. People, they, you know, you, you, that, that, they need to see that fire burning. You know, and you can keep that fire burning. You know, even though the fire looks like it's wilted out everywhere else, if you keep that fire, you can burn it. That's, yes, that's the other thing, too, is um, like people be on fire, but then you got to be careful what's, what keeps the fire going. Because mm -hmm. you could be burning for the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, today you're burning for the Lord, but then you let all this other stuff get in you. You know, we got to ask what's lighting your fire. You better keep that Holy Spirit burning. So, you know, it's just like, you know, you got a campfire. You put you put wood on, it's going to burn. Mm -hmm. Well, you can start putting all this other trash in it, it's going to burn, too. It's going to burn. It's so, burn. What, yeah, it's smoking it's stuff. So, what, yeah, it's so what's, you know, <laughs> what, are you, what are you feeding the fire with? And so, not only that, but then when you do your revivals and stuff, my thing is, who have you been revived? So yes. Once you come in here yes, and you man. get filled up, what are you doing with it? Are you going out here and you're sharing with other people? Or are we treating it like, you know, the ink cartridges, if you buy one and you don't use it and it's just dry up, and after a while you have to get another one because it ain't no good? 
Yep. And I think a lot of people sit on sit on that fire that they have because they don't talk to people like they should or they just think it's just for them. Right. No, word's not just for you. It's for anybody you come, you come in contact with. You know, that's what the Bible tells us about, you know, by the word be ready in season, out of season. Because you never know what opportunity is going to present itself to where you can talk to somebody. And it don't have to be a full-blown sermon, too. All it needs to be is just a, a word. Just, like you said, we're planting seeds, just dropping a little bit here, a little bit there. But you got to be in the mindset to where you can do it instead of just thinking, well, I got mine, and you better get yours. No, you got yours. You better share it, share it with somebody else so they can get theirs, too. It's not like the lifeboat where if somebody pulls you out of the water, you don't think you need to help pull somebody else out of the water because you're fine. No, you need to, the same the same way somebody helped pull you out of your mess, you need to take the time to help pull somebody else out of theirs too. So, you know, and most people don't think that way because they think once they get saved, that they're fine. You know, I got mine, I'm just going to sit down and just you come to church and hear word, hear this music and just, you know, wait and let the Lord do what he do. Don't work that way. No, you got to work too. You know, that's why you need to be revived. You got to work. Like I say, we didn't, we didn't just say you just for you to stay still. We could, the Lord could have left you, left you where you were for that. You know, He saved you because say what, what He's done to you, He wants to do through you. So He wants to use you to influence other people that we may not see and we may not know, who may we may not have that relationship with. Let them see the change in you. So hopefully, it'll inspire change in them. So where you can, like I say, you can light a fire in them. Just like we said about our testimonies and things. Um, I know I went back home a couple years ago and I was doing, we were officiating a service, just opening up for um, my aunt, her, her choir, my aunt, my grandma, they're on the same choir and they were having their anniversary. <clears throat> so we opened up a testimony service and we had probably about 40 people at least 40 people in this sanctuary. And we opened up testimony service, and only two people want to stand up and say something. And so, and they would get ready to come in, and zeal, the Lord came over me, and I got that mic, and I, if I would have thought about it, I would have explained it a lot better, but it was just Ooh. zeal to where I said, there's no way we got all these people in here, and you know, we got all these people in here, and only two people want to talk, give the Lord some praise. Ooh. You know, like I said, you know, we sing that song, we can bless the Lord at all. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be continued in my mouth. You know, like, like Dr. Crawford said at time, you can sing a lot as well as tell them. And so by the time I finish saying, <laughs> you're about to start popping up, well, I don't need nobody to, to, to prime me up to talk to the Lord. But just like we're saying, everybody, you can't assume everybody that's in church is saved. You can't assume everybody that's just sitting beside you in the pew is saved. And if we give you opportunities to talk, to say some good things about the Lord, and you looking around like you don't want to say nothing, how does that inspire them? They're like, well, God must not be that good if y'all sitting here not want to talk about them. Now, we understand everybody's not inspired to tell what the Lord's done for them at that time. Yeah, a lot of people. But if you got this crowd of people here, there should be more than two people standing up to talk to the Lord. You know, it's like if you had a, a party at your house mm -hmm. and you had a, a large gathering of people and we took our time to say, okay, um, at this time, we're going to give everybody the opportunity to say good things about, you know, our host. Mm -hmm. If nobody stood up and said anything, you would be looking at them crazy. Like, I know y'all ain't in my house drinking my drink, eating my food, <laughs> using up my AC and stuff, and y'all ain't got nothing, to say, nothing good to say about me. So, so how does the Lord feel when we come into his house? And when you have all these people who you give an opportunity to talk, to bless the Lord, to speak well of, and, and you barely want to say anything about him. You know, it's just like when, he, when Jesus healed the ten lepers. And they went to show themselves to the priest. Only one came back. And the one came back, wasn't even the, he wasn't even the one in covenant. And Jesus said, wait a minute, weren't there ten? Where are the other nine? So that's why if you, you look at it, with, what, did I do something good for you? All these people were the other ones. Where's everybody else who's who's speaking for me? Who wants to, you know? I just think, just think about that. Like how we don't want to talk about the goodness of the Lord, but if we want to talk about some mess, everybody will be eager to talk. Yeah. If you want to talk about these these um, love and hip hops and all these reality shows and all this other stuff, this power and all that stuff, 
that ain't doing nothing, they ain't helping nobody get saved or nothing. We would be eager to talk about that. But then when it comes to talking to the goodness of the Lord, we're looking around and seeing who we want to talk. And I said, that might be what the way things are now because the devil don't get tired. He ain't burned out. <laughs> he, work, he working. So we better get to working too. Like I said, you know, it, you know, it's making me think more of the influence that we have about our actions about around people because if you're not excited about the Lord, you can't expect somebody else to be excited about it. Right? You know, if you come here and you don't want to give God praise, why would you look at? Why? How can you come and tell me about giving God praise? I just saw you. They gave you the opportunity. You sat there like you. You didn't have a care in the world. Like you didn't want to do nothing else. So how are you gonna come and talk to me about the goodness of the Lord? Well, he ain't that good because when they gave you the opportunity, you didn't say how good he was. So you gotta be. We gotta be mindful of that. That's right. You got to. We got, it's, 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 it's the, it's the, see, it ain't the big things, it's the, it's the little things. It's the little things that we that we don't pay attention to are the things that have the biggest impact on people. You know, like I said, I can't hear, I can't hear what you're saying for seeing what you are. But if he woke you up in the morning, he doesn't be a child. Yeah. Saying that, can no one do that God has done in his name? That's right. Mm -hmm. Until you get that one morning where it don't happen, where your legs don't work right, mm. or you don't wake up or something, and then oh, mm. you know, mm. Lord gets attention then. Mm. Yeah. You know something I don't understand? That some people like they don't wake up, they don't give God praise, they don't read the Bible, don't say no songs of Christianity, you know what I mean, or or anything like that. But then they always say they want to go to heaven. So I'm looking at you and asking myself, thinking in my mind, why? If you don't want to praise God, you don't want to glorify Him, lift Him up, you know, because we should be, if we come into contact, me and you, mm -hmm. we Christian brothers, something will snap. Mm -hmm. Something will happen. You know what I'm saying? We should get to get something will help out of heaven, right? Mm -hmm. I'm expecting something to happen. Right. But I give you another dude to talk about, you know, the Lord, you know, I feel good. You know, dead, dog, I'm looking at this guy. There ain't no spark or something. Something wrong with you know, Joe. You know what I mean? When you walk into my shop, first thing in the morning at 6 o'clock, there's a dude named Dr. Charles Stedman. It'll be on the radio. Now, I had trouble with the bosses the first time. But with the other guys, I thought, well, this dude trying to turn me to a Christian. <laughs> 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 they took that front to talk to me. Right? Yeah, I had to do that. So I told him, I said, I ain't trying to change nobody to nothing. I said, no. this man can have the radio at this certain time. You can have the radio for six hours. I just need it for a couple hours. I need it in the morning, I need it in the afternoon, and the time to go home. Three times a day, he can have the rest. The guy said, oh, I'll take it. But every day, I work with that guy. So you know what I was doing. Every day, I work with that joke for eight long days. Now, he tells me what time it is. So you know it's 11 o'clock. You know what's coming over, right? Yeah. See that? Yeah. See how God can work with me, man? All I need him to do is keep that in word every day. That's right. You see, if you do something for 30 days, constantly, 30 days, you start to train your mind. Mm -hmm. Once that mind becomes a slave to it, you just do it all back. Mm -hmm. All I need to do every day, I need the same time. Every day, I never miss the time. Every day, every day, every day. Then one day, I didn't, I didn't say anything about the time. That dude came, hey man, you know it's 11 o'clock. I was all thinking that. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah, and another thing for me, um, people preach about preaching and filming and stuff, I mean, some preach Try to put everybody in the cabinet. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't understand. I don't say what I'm asking about. Yeah, that's what you should. That's. I know what you mean. You sure enough, right? I mean, they try to put everybody, you know that child, man. I don't know. You know what I mean? So I don't know if they, they maybe they're not trying to trying to upset the family, but I mean you know. You, you ain't got to upset the family. You can say. I mean, right. but some people do it so they don't get you know. 
Right. But some people get in here like I'm not. Some people just want to preach the funeral. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not gonna stand up here and lie. I'm not gonna stand up here and lie and say yeah, you, 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 you were real spiritual and all this. I ain't heard, yeah. ain't heard you yeah. say nothing about Jesus. Yeah, you ain't true. tried to do nothing good or nothing. So. Right. Yeah, because a lot of them, they, they'll, they'll turn it down. They say, no, I, I can't do it. So it's like, well, see, know, that, and that, some of them will preach right. it, but they're not even gonna be preaching. Right. Right. They'll, 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 they'll have preach around there. You know, they'll preach around and try to get the people in the congregation. And I'm telling you. Exactly. What they should try right. to do, though, preach around there and try to get the congregation saying someone out there that's not saved. Right. One thing they have to understand, that deceased person surely is already preached. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing, you can, say, ain't nothing you can say about it. What, when we preach a funeral, we shouldn't be preaching about the individual that died. Right. The message right. should be for the people that live. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But we fall victim of that sometimes. I think a lot of pastors do that, you know, that uh, sort of help the family sort of get through with that. But if we do what we are supposed to do, we are preaching, and some preachers will tell you, tell you that. And I tell them that too. If I preach a funeral, I'm not preaching for the deceased. I'm preaching to y'all that's there. That's right. Ain't nothing the deceased can, can do. I ain't nothing I can say to help them out. See what I'm saying? So ain't no need to get out there and tell a lie, well, yeah, he's a fake for this saying fake. But now you lie. Yeah. But a lot of them are saying that they the reason why they're doing that because they ain't they ain't got it right themselves. Right. You see what I'm saying? So there's nothing wrong with preaching preaching a, a, a funeral, but preach the word to the people that live in to help them out. You see what I'm saying? So ain't no need to get out there and tell that because I would never I would never do that. I would divide it unless I know your life. Okay, I'm not gonna say tell people, yes, you could come here every day and go to church every, pay this in, pay that, and always, I, I, forget about that. Preach the word, preach to the people that's there, okay? That's right, exactly. You know, so you can't put people in heaven. When people to make up, that's a song we used to sing, may the life I live speak for me. The life that you live here on earth when you live, when you're on earth, you preaching your funeral right then and there. The life you live, how you live in on earth, is your funeral. So we can't put nobody nowhere. We can't put them nowhere. We can't even put them there. So just preach the word and bring the word to the people that's there so they can, you know, so. I hear a lot of them. They try to put them in heaven, all right. You sure know right about that. And no, they ain't going to like them. They, Trust me, they ain't gonna say later on what I'm sorry. No, they don't say well, no. They ain't, they ain't gonna hear that because they said if I want to say it, but they didn't. Yeah, that's why I should remind us to live a life where nobody has to lie to you. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Whether they're preaching and they're coming to say good things about you. Yeah. If I say it ain't, you gotta dance around no words or nothing like that. Say I know. They're saved, they love the Lord, they let everybody know they love the Lord, they live their life like they love it, they treat the people like they love the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a doubt about them. Mm -hmm. So like I say, I can preach the rest of y'all, but I don't have no doubt where he is or where she right. is. That's right. That's why you can, you can rejoice. That's right. You gotta come up here and fake it. You ain't gotta say nothing to try to make y'all feel good. You've seen it yep. yourself. Yep. So you know. So now the question is, can we say the same thing about you? They're in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Now, whether they stay in the presence of the Lord depends on what they right. what they did while they were there. Yes, Lord. So that's why we try to live in life and please to God. Thank you. 
and did mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then he died. Mm -hmm. He got off the couch and died. Mm -hmm. You know what? We've been living in this world a hundred years. Saved and sanctified and Holy Ghost filled and five baptized. For all that time. But, with, but if you ain't that way, when you leave from here and you're the sinner, you're a sinner. That's because you've been saved a hundred years. How were you when you, when you left from here? You know. Where were you? Are you did you still love the Lord? Did you still were you a Christian when you left? You know. I think we hope there ain't too many people that way, but you know, that's what God, that's what that's what the man of above looking for. When you baby the when you come in front of that judgment seat of God, when he gave and say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. The only way you're gonna hear them words, you got to have it had it right when you left them. You see what I'm saying? So Plus everybody's different, so oh, yeah. some people get some people do get that last opportunity before. Oh yeah, some people don't. They have their deathbed to you know. Some people do. They repent on that. But you can't you can't count do. on that. They did that too. Oh yeah, people can do that. Yeah, now, you can do it, but you can't you can't I wouldn't count on that. Oh yeah, then get right, get right. That's right. I wouldn't count on that because you don't know how. You don't know how you leave here, and you don't know when. Some people do, some people don't. That's why I encourage you to do it today. That's why, you know, we say you should prepare like you're going to heaven tomorrow. But, you no, know, you should live life like you're, living, like you're going to heaven tomorrow. But prepare like you're going to be here for the next hundred years. So, I'm going to live my life like I'm, like Jesus can come at any moment. So, whatever we got to do when we slip over, you know, we repent and come back. But, I'm going to still make my plans and stuff like I'm going to be here for the long haul. Oh, yeah. So I got this taken care of. It's like a suitcase in the closet. So like, you know, how people, when they're about to have babies and they have like a bag packed already, that's what kind of salvation is like that. So when time comes, you know, we got that. Or even the better, the, um, about the, um, the um, what was it, the bridesmaids and the lamps? Or the brides and the lamps? But some had to go back and get oil and some had their oil already. Just make sure you got your oil, just make sure you got your oil already. As long as you got your oil, got your oil with you, when time comes, yeah, that's right. you're ready to go. You ready to go? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. That's right. Be ready. That's right. So just trying to make sure everybody else got their oil too. So make sure you got your oil for the trip too. So. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank God for the lesson. Thank God for everybody that was here. Mm -hmm. All the comments that were um, provided. They have any announcements in there, do Okay. No announcements. So, um, I'll let you guys know what the next lesson is. Now, I guess you're following before we leave, so I'll make sure you get the text up. Okay. So, if all hearts and minds are clear, I pray and we'll be dismissed. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Wise and eternal God, we thank you once thank again for Jesus. allowing us to be into your house one more time. We thank you for our life, health, and strength, Father. We thank you for protecting us from yes, being seen Lord. and unseen. Thank you, Lord, we ask that you forgive us for any sins that we committed. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this lesson tonight, Lord, about getting Jesus. burnt down spiritually. Uh, we thank know we want to stay, keep that fire burning within us, Lord, so we want to stay in contact with you, to be led by you, to make thank sure you, we're not Jesus. doing things in our own strength. But doing things through Jesus. your might, your grace, your mercy. Because you're going to give us the grace to do whatever we need to do. And that if we do, those things do happen, that we can always come back to you. Whether people are against us or organizations or whatever comes against us, Lord, we know that you are with us. And your word tells us that he that is within me is greater than he who is in the world. And we believe that with all our heart, Father God. We just thank you for this lesson. We thank you for those who are here, for the comments that were given. We thank you for those who had desire to be here and couldn't. And for those who will be watching, Father God. Yes. Our Lord, we just thank you for all you do and who you are. We just ask you yes. to watch over those families who are sick or in grievance, Lord, that you will be the comforter and the healer that you are. Yes. And we just thank you for new opportunities that you're granting to us, Lord. Lord, where it looked like there was nowhere else to go, and then you opened up a way. You parted the sea, 
you led us through to a new new beginning, to new experiences, Father God. And we're just asking that you will be with us, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Be with um, Brother Sibbles, Father God, as he yes, embarks on this new, yes. this new task right now, that you've given to him, Father God, that you in will strengthen him. Jesus. That you will let your power work through him so desire. that he can touch many people. Touch and let them know that there is a man of God here. In the name of that Jesus. there is someone who loves the Lord here. God and who loves, that he loves them also. That's his and allow, allow him to let you shine Jesus. through him, Father God. So that may, he may be as effective as he can be, and that you will get the glory out of everything he does. In that name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you, if you delay your return, that you would, we will see each other again, Father. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will bless us indeed in our larger territory, you, that your hand will be with us to keep us from evil, so yes. we don't cause pain. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you bless us and you keep us. You shine your face upon us, you're gracious unto us, you lift your countenance upon us, and you give us peace. So, Thank Lord, you, we Jesus. invite you to rise up, to let your enemies be scattered, and let those that hate you before you. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 All right. Well, that's the good night, bro. All right. God bless you.